Donald Trump was channeling his inner emo kid today in yet another unhinged, but this time very dark, truth social post he made trying to defend his toddler-like anger in Tuesday's debate. Now, I have a few ideas why widow Donnie Dipey might be so angy-wangy. And the fact that this is a fan-voted award and you voted for this, I, I appreciate it so much. And if you are over 18, please register to vote for something else that's very important for me. Yeah, you know damn well those people ain't voting for him, especially after Megyn Kelly nearly bursted a blood vessel cussing out Taylor Swift and her fans. And I don't give a shit who gets upset. This is disgusting. She, if she wants to vote Harris Walls, she can do it all she wants. But to say the reason she's doing it is because of Tim Walls' stance on LGBTQ, F you, Taylor Swift. Clearly some bad blood between T-Swift and MAGA. Cause baby, now we got well, you know what they say, karma is a cat lady. Karma is a cat, in my lap cause it loves me. This is unbelievable, the left is losing its mind. She signed it Taylor Swift, childless cat lady. But on top of Trump's Taylor Swift issues, he is also still clearly having a hard time shaking off his debate debacle as well. Is in a classic case of Magadonian make-believe similar to his delusions about the last election, he apparently still thinks he won. I think it was the best debate I've ever personally that I've had. We're getting polls that show 92 to 6, uh, 88 to, to 11. Every single poll last night had me winning like 90 to 10. We had uh, C-SPAN at one point was at 80 to 20. We looked at one poll, it was 92 to 7. We had a 92% rating in one poll. We had an 86% rating and another, we had 77%, 90%, 60%, 72%, 71%, and 89%. Who the hell was running these polls he's talking about? I mean, cats and dogs? They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats, they're eating. But despite what Trump may think, even some of his biggest dick suckers, I, I mean supporters, don't really agree with that sentiment. I, I asked several of, the, of his surrogates like what they thought, and the number one question I asked them was, what did you think his best answer was tonight? Uh, none of them could come up with anything. And then I saw my old friend Lindsey Graham. Uh, you know, we were used to be pals in 2016 when he was a Jeb endorser, and uh, we, had a, we had a pretty heated exchange, I will have to say, um, uh, where uh, he said I should be ashamed of myself, and the feeling was kind of mutual. But after after our argument about the state of affairs of politics, um, you know, when, when we calmed down a little, Bit. He, he looked at me and he was just like, you are right about one thing. That was a disaster. He was unprepared and we should fire the debate team. I, I think that's all you need to know about tonight. You know, when you have a, your surrogate in the debate room saying you, you should fire the debate prep team, I think we know who won and who lost. Damn, when you lose a Trump thump and cheerleader like Lindsey Graham and Fox News, you honestly look worse than the New York Giants did on their season opener. Go birds. But that didn't stop Trumpy Dumpty from railing against the moderators. I thought they were very unfair, the moderators. Everybody did. I thought it was uh, terrible from the standpoint of ABC. It was three to one. It was a rigged deal, as, as I assumed it would be, because when you looked at the... Uh, the fact that they were correcting everything and not correcting with her. Uh, yeah, dipstick, they were correcting you because you were making shit up. Like, imagine if a toddler started spouting racist conspiracy theories and claiming January 6th never happened, and that toddler was also saying it on a debate stage while running for president. You'd probably do what any sane person would do and correct his pea-brained ass and then immediately change his diaper and lay him down for a well-needed nap. But the temper tantrum went on, because when no one buys your bullshit, the best thing to do is obviously accuse your opponent of cheating. They had a rigged show with somebody that maybe even had the answers. I mean, I'll be honest, I watched her talk, and I said, you know, she seems awfully familiar with the questions. Yeah, she probably seemed familiar with the question because she prepared for the debate instead of using your strategy of screaming J.D. Vance tweets at the moderators. But Trump's tone took a dramatic shift today when he went on a dark and broody rant on Truth Social, saying, 
I won the debate but was criticized by the radical left lunatics because I looked angry and forceful. But think, why would I be angry? I love the USA and it is being destroyed by grossly incompetent leadership, inflation, a terrible economy, horrible military decisions, no respect from around the world, and more than 20 million people, many from prisons and mental institutions, are pouring into our country and creating havoc, crime, and destruction like I've never seen before. Am I supposed to be smiling like comrade Kamala Harris with her fake one and a half hour smile and long practiced facial expressions? Despite all of the problems that she and Crooked Joe have caused? No, there's nothing to smile about, but there will be in the not too distant future when America makes the biggest comeback in history. November 5th, make America great again. Jesus, Donald, nothing to smile about? He sounds as depressed as Melania. Could we be witnessing Donald Trump's emo era? I am being viciously attacked with lies and smears. I think it's a disgrace. And I say that, and I say that. They're making me out to be a very mean, bad kind of a guy. If that's not me, what the hell is going on? And frankly, I, I wouldn't blame him. Though Trump has said he's pleased with his performance. This was my best debate. I thought it was very good. Several Republican donors and three Trump advisors told Reuters they thought Harris had won the debate, largely because Trump was unable to stay on message. They're eating the dogs. <laughs> you talk about extreme. <laughs> Republican Senator Lindsey Graham is one of the few party leaders to publicly say Trump's performance was poor, telling reporters it was a, quote, missed opportunity. I mean, just listen to this scathing review Republican strategist Karl Rove gave about his debate performance. Writing in the Wall Street Journal, as is frequently the case with Mr. Trump, he let his emotions get the better of him. He took the bait almost every time she put it on the hook, offering a pained smile as she did. Rather than dismissing her attacks and launching his strongest counterarguments against her, Mr. Trump got furious. As her attacks continued, his voice rose. He gripped the podium more often and more firmly. He grimaced and shook his head, at times responding with wild and fanciful rhetoric. Short, deft replies and counterpunches would have been effective. He didn't deliver them. Will this debate have an effect? Yes, though perhaps not as much as Team Harris hopes or as much as Team Trump might fear. But there's no putting lipstick on this pig. Mr. Trump was crushed by a woman he previously dismissed as dumb as a rock. Which raises the question, what does that make him? Who wants scanty and butter? She's got a pig heart now. She thinks she's a pack of derm. <laughs> This isn't their Republican Party anymore! Trust me. Shut the f up, Don. Who's with me? <laughs> oh, yeah, the lie. Indictable. Just out of sheer morbid curiosity, I'm allowing this freak show to continue. I don't want to talk about this stuff. Do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, Am I wrong? Yes! Tick tock! We're in a lot of trouble, Donnie. Thanks for watching, folks. For Really American, I'm Kenny Hess, and I'll see you all in the next one.